What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 4 of section 4. In this part what we're going to be talking about is XML and primarily RSS. So if you hear the term XML, generally what people are talking about is RSS feeds. So first of all, what is XML? So XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. You don't really need to know what it stands for, but what it does is it's meant to be legible easily by both humans and machines. So let me show you an example of an XML document. Now again, for the most part, people use XML documents for RSS feeds, or at least in the field that we're interested in here, with, which is Python for the web. So here's an example of an XML document. So you can go to this uh, link here. It's www.nationaljournal.com slash politics and then RSS equals one. So that just basically that means one for true. So that's their logic anyways. So this is your RSS document and it's a lot like HTML, how it works, but you've got tags, right? And the tags describe what goes between the tags. So here you've got RSS and if we go all the way to the very, very bottom, we see the RSS tag closes off. So we'll come back up to the top here, and there it is. And then you've got stuff like channel, and then you've got title, and blah, blah, blah. But as we go down, here we can get to each element, you know, in this RSS feed. So generally, RSS feeds will contain, you know, maybe 25 elements per feed. So then each element here is separated by item tags. So these item tags go around everything that is part of an, the quote-unquote item. Then what we have are like you've got item here and you've got title and then title tags inside here is what's the title. So the title is Oklahoma GOP wants chairman out for protecting official guilty of domestic abuse. OK, but then you've got other information here like who was the this one is creator. Sometimes you might have author. This is pub date. And then here's the link. So what we might do as programmers is we visit the RSS feed and we look for the link. But. How do we actually get the link? And then also, sometimes we go ahead and pull the description. And the description, what it's going to give us is like a short description of what the article is about. So if we were to maybe create our own RSS feed that was basically consisted of this data, but maybe made it look a little prettier for humans, we can use all basically all of this data. Now, keep in mind the legalities of doing stuff like this. Uh, a lot of RSS feeds have... Uh, terms of service or terms and conditions and they say hey you cannot use this RSS feed for anything commercial right this RSS feed can only be used for personal non-commercial use and the jury is still out so to speak on the legalities of that right so first of all terms of service on any website is not a legally binding contract necessarily but it is a statement of copyright or statement of trademark sometimes. So you do have to be careful. You can't just go around stealing people's website articles and posting them on your own website and claiming them as your own because this is actually illegal to do. So an example of legalities would be things like Flipboard is a RSS feed aggregator for people. So they can put their things on there and Flipboard basically gets pulls the information from those website RSS feeds and gives them to you. Another example is Pulse. So Pulse is actually a paid app and they will actually charge for the service and back in 2010 New York Times filed uh, a DMCA against them uh, to get their app pulled from the Apple Store. It was successful but Pulse did actually return pretty quickly later and I think it's still unknown as to you know what what kind of agreement was reached there but most likely it was just a realization on uh, New York Times part that they had no case and they probably wanted to be back on pulse so their information was still visited but anyway keep in mind that these things do exist so you have to be really careful and so I highly suggest you read the terms of service on every RSS feed as well as the websites that you actually intend to parse so generally if all you're doing is maybe research or something like that you're probably going to be in the clear no matter what you end up doing unless you're like hacking the website but if you're say trying to pull some data and make your own little mini news website using content from articles 
chances are this is uh, actually illegal and you can go to jail for it. <laughs> so definitely be careful there. Now, in the next video, what we're going to be talking about is how to get the content from here into Python. So how can we actually read this content and maybe select various tags within here? And so this is actually going to be a lot like what we'll end up doing with HTML. HTML is a lot like this where you've got tags and then in between tags you've got certain types of information right so between paragraph tags you've got paragraph data so like this is generally your article stuff like that and, and so on so this is just a much easier like xml is is kind of made for this so it's a little easier than html but it'll be a nice kind of foray into html as we get into that as well so stay tuned to the next video and we'll start parsing out some uh, this valuable data